All right, got another one here. It's a uh, condenser for a walk-in cooler. So called out here today because it was not reported as not cooling. Uh, go inside the cooler and you can hear vapor just going right through the circuit. So when you can hear it like that, usually that means that it's not liquid. Um, come up on the roof and I found this unit short cycling off of low pressure. Uh, and when it does come on, the uh, side glass here is just, there's nothing in it. There, that's better. When I had it turned on the side glass, you, there was hardly no vapor in it. Symptoms of a low charge, the compressor will be hot. Um, and, and short cycling like that on and off, on and off pretty quickly with, within like five, 10 seconds is a quick sign. So we I got my trusty H10 and this thing picks up on leaks immediately right here in this corner and you can actually see the oil. So looking at it closely, um, down at the bottom, you can see how this kind of starts to corrode right here. You can see it starts to flake away. Well, that's real bad down here at the bottom. Um, I ended up spraying bubbles on it before I, I started filming. But, so you can see right there, we've got a bubble forming. You gotta turn the unit off when you do this. You gotta make sure that the condenser fan's off and the compressor's off. And you can't just shut it off at the disconnect either because if you shut it off, well, you can shut it off at the disconnect, but the problem is if you shut the disconnect off, you close the liquid line solenoid valve on the inside. So you only have about maybe 30, 20, 30, 40 pounds of PSI on the suction side. So if you've got a suction side leak, it's gonna be harder to find. Um, so what I do is I open up the panel, open the panel here, and I don't ever shut power off for this. I can just, I trust myself enough to leave power on. But you disconnect the contactor. So this is your contactor here, you've got yellow, yellow and blue wires there on the back, close to the wall, that are your contactor. So I followed it around, and uh, that one came in to this wire here, that came into the right side of that, so I just pulled it off, that shuts my contactor off. So the unit still has power, and we still energize the solenoid valve, so the, the pressures stabilize and equalize, so you have equal pressures, whatever little bit of refrigerant's left in there is equal on both sides, so you can find your leak on the suction or the header, or, I mean the liquid side. So this one's actually growing pretty quick. That bubble. So zooming in, looking closer, you can see the bubble right there forming, and that's, that's, a, that's considered a major leak when it forms that quickly. Oh, there you go, you can, there you go. There it is. Major leak. The way the EPA is now, you can't leave a leak, so. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, to eliminate the leak while we order a new one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna recover what's in it, okay? I'm gonna get two 3 8 elbows, right? Once it has no pressure in it, I'm gonna pull this one out, this one out. I'm gonna elbow over to the right, or up there, then I'm gonna elbow over into this circuit right here. These ones in red, they are, they're two loops. So those make a loop all the way down to the condenser and back. So I'm gonna eliminate those two out of the circuit and then that green line you see there, I'm gonna take piping 290s and go into the third one up, the third inlet. And that's gonna stop the leak. So I went to United, I got my refrigerant, got me some copper here, bought these little, this little tool up there, it was uh, 20 bucks for this thing. Anyways, so the hardest part of this is I've got to carry this, rig all this, recovery machine, torches, tank, refrigerant up there to the roof and across. And I'm going to get everything prepared and ready so that I can shut the unit off, recover it, and, and get everything done as quick as I can. So that I can have the unit off for a minimum amount of time because there is food in this cooler and it, the cooler is really not at temperature. So I gotta have the unit off for a minimum amount of time. So I'm gonna go get, before I shut it off, I'm gonna get my, my torches up here, I'm gonna get my copper, I'm gonna get my copper cut, have it ready to put on or as, as best as I can. And I'm gonna show you guys all of it. Got these two street elbows from United. All right, so I'm getting set up, got my, two elbows and my rigid copper gotta watch out though because really good chances of rain one thing I can't do is have this refrigerant circuit open when it's raining so 
if it's gonna rain, I gotta either wait or I gotta hurry up. And then also I can't have this unit down while I wait for the rain, that's no good either. So I held it up there. So this is about, this is about what I need to span from here to here. So when you're cutting copper, you gotta take into fact into account that it's gonna slide in. And then I've gotta uh, get my switch good so I can make, uh, I can make that bigger so that it's like a street coupling. So something like this, I'd do just fine. All right, so kind of start cutting. You gotta be careful when you start doing this because if you see right here where the tip of my glove is, it starts spiraling, kind of like a screw. You gotta make sure when you're cutting that it don't do that. These are so small that see because that's a square right there can't really turn it by fingers so you want to turn it like an eighth of a turn every time you tighten it then you cut your copper you get it until it's goes really easy and you go like an eighth or maybe even a quarter turn I don't know, let me see Let's see what a quarter does uh, I think a quarter is too much well maybe not anywhere between an eighth and a quarter turn just kind of feel it yourself you don't want to break your tool or break your blade if you do it too tight you'll break your blade or you break your tool or you'll, you'll you know the copper up a little bit. We want to do that. Yeah, about a quarter each time. And there it is. So I'm gonna get my swedge tool. And the swedge tool is I didn't know what a swedge tool was before this year. Is it grabs onto this and then it'll actually widen this so it'll make this like a coupling end and then this end. So that's gonna slide into this perfectly. Got my smaller side. It's gonna slide into the coupling of that elbow right there. And then this this will be a coupling slider slide over that. So if any of you out there don't know, this is a swedge kit. Comes with these things. It's also it also does flaring with that. But this does great things with copper tubing. Specifically, it expands it so that you can make couplings and fittings and all that good stuff. So you'll see what I do with it. All right. So with the swedge kit, you get your piece, and it's three eighths. So it's going to go in this hole right here. So. You open her up and you go let's see you go about kind of kind of like I'm gonna go about that far okay then you close it off get a good good grip on it sometimes with these if you can't turn it anymore you have more leverage over here so loosen that one and turn this one a little more then get this one more turned and closed and then you have more leverage to turn it from this way. Then you find the the, the part fitting whatever out of the kit that matches the three eighths. So it's that one. So I'm gonna use this thing to shove this piece into the pipe thereby expanding it and making a coupling end out of it. Also, you got to uh, you got to make sure that you put this in uh, on the side that has the letters. So, so I'm gonna loosen this a little bit, and then I'm gonna push this over. Sorry, I keep putting y'all on the bottom of the screen. So like that, letters up. All right. So once you have this all together. Put it on there, put that in there, you gotta get it to where it turns and locks into place, you see? Once it locks into place, you begin turning it, and then you push it all the way through. Let's see if I can get this on camera. I don't know how well you can see it, maybe pretty well. It's not the easiest thing to do either. With a small pipe like this, it ain't really too hard, but once you start getting into bigger pipe, you gotta get leverage, better leverage on it. I'm gonna have to go a little more into the pipe because I want the coupling bigger than that. Longer, is what I mean. I want it to be about three-eighths of an inch, kind of like, kind of like that one. See? I guess I had it positioned right the first time. After all. Okay. So. Two 
continuing here. Oh, I see now. You can only go as deep as this is going to allow you. This is going to bottom out on the on the metal die. I guess it's called die. I don't know. So that's as far as I can go with it. Good enough. Alrighty then. So now I've just extended my offset. That's my offset now. Let's see. I think that's going to be perfect. Damn. Sometimes I'm good, man. Shit, I'm good. Take your sandpaper, right? And split it down the middle. Okay. And these are much easier to work with when you're playing with copper that's small like this. I'm even doing a thinner one because I've got to get... I don't have to, I suppose, but I like doing things right. But I'm going to get in there see right there so I need one that is small you see I'm gonna go over this again not just for you but for me over on the other side we've got loops like this all the way down to the bottom you can see here they're diagonal they angle up and it's like that I don't know if you can see it all the way down to the bottom they're like that so when you look at it on the other side we know that on the other side, we've got a loop that goes from here to here, okay? So this one goes down, it comes back, it comes here. The flow of the refrigerant is this way. It's coming this way. Coming in here and out there. So, then it's gonna go all the way down, okay? And on the other side, it loops back and comes over here. So, this is away, this is refrigerant coming back, and then into here, okay? So I was wrong a minute ago. I'm actually doing this one, so I'm gonna sand this one real quick. See, I'm glad I double checked myself. Always double check what you're doing before you do it. All right, I got that, sanded just about as best I could. So, this is the plan right here. Recover. Get it down to zero PSI. Pull out this one, this one. Unsweat this. Pull it back a little so I can cut it. Cut it with my tubing cutters. Then this is gonna go right into there, offset. I'm not gonna be able to record this, so I'm gonna do it. I'll show you a clip here in the middle when I have these out, and I'll show you bits and pieces, but when I'm using the fire, I'm not gonna be able to record it. Now, on most systems, when you power off and disconnect out here, you're going to kill power to the evaporator and the liquid line solenoid valve. So your solenoid valve on your liquid line, wherever it may be on the liquid line, is going to close. While this step here is not necessary, I like to unhook my contactor and make sure your power is off before you start poking around in here. Disconnect my contactor, okay, and Turn this back on. This will keep my compressor and my condenser fans off and open my liquid line solenoid valve. Now I've looked at this a little closer. I'm not gonna have to recover the whole system. I can isolate the condenser with this valve here, which is on my discharge line between the discharge, I mean between the compressor and the condenser. So I got the valve over there, right? down there and then I've got the valve right here so I close both of these valves and that isolates my condenser coil so most likely on this system both ports on these valves that I'm gonna valve off will not connect me with the circuit I have to empty so we've got this one right here this extra one that's just there you know you wonder well what's that for well that's for this when you isolate the coil you gotta connect to this one okay once I'm connected to that one I'm ready to shut the unit down and close both of my valves. It's gonna be the one on the receiver right here and the one on the discharge line that's gonna isolate my condenser. Okay, I'm valved off here and on the receiver. I'm gonna to start to recover the condenser coil, which is isolated. All right, so recovery has begun on the condenser coil. It should not take very long to empty that coil out. And this refrigerant jug should be more than enough 
So, made another video about recovering. Uh, it's on the same system, but you guys are welcome to watch if you want some other information. Um, but I was saying in there, never walk away from your recovery machine. Don't let your can get too hot. Uh, always purge your lines. Keep non-condensables out. Uh, don't let this get above 400. In my case, my machine starts shutting off at like uh, 375. It's shut. So like at 375 pounds, my machine shut off. It might have a safety built into it, or it could have a weak unit or something. Because I've actually never had one shut off on me like that at 375. But whatever. So we are recovering the condenser coil only because I close that valve, which feeds the condenser. And then I close the receiver valve, which feeds the other side of the condenser. Okay, so it's been running about five minutes and it's, uh, it's, it's empty, it's good. Okay, my condenser coil is empty, zero PSI. So, here we go. I can't record this, I wish I could. I probably could, but it wouldn't be good quality. So, I'll tell you. I'm gonna hit, heat this up. First, I'm gonna heat the bottom one up, then I'm gonna pull it out so I have some room to work. Then I'm gonna heat this one up, and I'm gonna pull that loop out, and I'm gonna heat this one up and pull that loop out, and then I'll be back. Okay, there we go. So, make things go faster. Use wet rag. This one kind of already dried some, but it's still hot. These are fucking hot too. You gotta watch out. Don't let this hot stuff get on the roof and melt the hole. The store won't like that. Oh shit. Um, okay, so you see here, right there, my copper broke instead of sliding out. But that's okay, because that's not gonna have pressure in it when I'm done, right? Because these go down there and loop back, so this is a loop with this one, and this is a loop with this one. Me going from here to here, there's no pressure there, so I can leave that alone. Now, 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 what I got here is gonna go right there. You see? You see? Uh huh. Perfect. Perfect. So, entonces, I just got to trim this back a little bit with my little snubbies fit it together solder it in so I got my short and stubbies on there and sometimes when you cut these you don't have to be able to go all the way around sometimes just going let's see how much this is only like half of it it'd be better to go around a little more than half but even I can work with half do in those cases like if you can't get all the way take it off turn it around by taking it off and reversing it you can get the other side All right, I cut it cut. I got it cut down. So there we go. Just these really needs to be fitted. It's gonna work. And then I got space in my couplings to slide to make up for the. Like I'm gonna see how I'm a little short right there. Kind of. It's like a little short. Well, it slides with the coupling. Yeah. Bam. And that is how you fucking do it. Just like I planned. See, I like it when things go the way I plan. So we're ready for some heat. This one doesn't really want to slide in, but once you get it hot, it slides in nice. Nice and perfect. All right, just like that, it's soldered, part of the circuit. Now, the leak has been eliminated, should have been. Now we can uh, go about pressurizing it. Of course, that can cool it down, because it's fucking hot. Uh, pressurize it and see, unless you don't want to get the bad news, at least test it and see if what you did is gonna make a difference or not. In this case, we're gonna be replacing this condenser coil because this store's no cheap ass. And they're gonna they're gonna get a new coil. But in the meantime, EPA will not let us, or at least my rules say, that we're not allowed to leave a leak unresolved. So if I wasn't able to get this patch somehow today, the system would have had to be down. I couldn't add refrigerant to it without, you know that, without fixing it. But as you can see, look, see, this coil, this coil done, Let's see if I can get, Freaking zoom, I mean, focus. That's better. So, I mean, just check it out. It's just a matter of time before the rest of this coil leaks. So they, they gotta replace it. And that, this, what I just did, will fix this part. But what about these other parts? Those are gonna go soon. 
All right, so now, once my repair is made, I'm gonna close this valve off, and I'm gonna check for leak. I'll open this receiver valve. A little bit. Okay. I'm gonna open both of them up and come back. Okay, so it's back on now. Up and running, let's see. Actually, I think I'm gonna shut it down. Yeah, I'm gonna shut it down for this. All right, here we are. It was really bad over here earlier. I got it. So the leak was right here. Right here on that one. So, no more leak. Alrighty then, restart and recharge, top off, all within compliance of EPA. All right, so it's all walking apart from here. I'm gonna go ahead and end it. I'm gonna charge it up until we got a clear sight glass and I'm gonna stay and make sure that the box gets down to temperature. Once so my sight glass clears here in a few minutes, I'm gonna walk down, check the temperature of the space. It was at uh, about 48 when I got here this morning. Um, then I'll come back up here. While I'm down there, the refrigerant circuit will be able to stabilize some. When I come back up, I'll make sure my sight glass is still clear. Make sure it pumps down before I go, and that will be done. Then it'll be time to go home. All right, so I went and checked. It was 42 degrees. That was at, let's see, 254. All right, that's going to do it for up here. Got the sight glass cleared. Made sure it pumps down. Got this hail guard back on, which if you don't know how to put it on, it can be tricky. Get the top left corner in first, and then... Lift up your, lift up from over here, lift it up and get this top corner, then get the bottom ones in. All right, for my closing clip, we are sitting at 38 degrees and this job is complete. So, everybody, this is the cooler that my condenser is uh, working on, it is connected to. All this food in here depended on our repair today we did a good job we made a good bypass for that leak that i showed y'all we did good work 